Jim Walter. I'm a senior researcher here at Sentinel One, and we're going to take a little bit of a detour today and talk about uh, something um, not so much uh, product or functionality related, but we're going to talk specifically about ransomware and data links and what that actually looks like. You know, we we're, we all see articles every day about uh, certain companies getting hit um, and uh, their data being uh, leaked by ransomware actors, cyber criminals, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, not all of us have had the opportunity to see what some of those uh, sites uh, look like uh, once the leaks uh, are out there in the public. Um, and then also I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown on you know, kind of by industry on who's getting hit the hardest, at least in terms of these public blog sites, right? So we're going to go through several uh, ransomware families, and then we'll talk about some statistics and stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look, because again, um, these things are, are often pretty interesting and not everyone um, has seen these sites or not everyone knows how to get to these sites. Um, a lot of them are onion based or require the uh, um, uh, Tor browser, but that's not always the case. And with some of these ransomware families, they do both. You know, Maze, for example, has mirrors on the clear net as well as the deep dark web. And so they kind of cover both, uh, uh, both avenues. But um, what we have here is uh, the freshest of the bunch. Last Friday, uh, the actors behind Avidon posted this, um, posted their blog. Right now, there's only one company listed, but this kind of gives you uh, an idea of just how active uh, and dynamic uh, this stuff is. But we see one company here on Avidon's blog, um, and so far, that is it. And in this, this, this sort of format or this template, um, you'll see across all the all the sites that we look at here today. Um, you know, you've got a company, you've got some basic contact info, uh, and then some sort of you know proof of what they've been able to loot or harvest from the environments, and then usually some sort of downloadable stuff. Um, in this case, we have a three you know point five megabyte file um, from this company that was uh, hit by Avidon ransomware. Now, if we look at some of the other biggies, you know, again, this one just popped up, um, you know, less than a week ago. But let's go through some of the other biggies and we'll kind of uh, dive into those stats. You know, so here we have uh, Revil, uh, sometimes called Sodin, uh, but a very, very prolific, very, very popular ransomware family. These are the guys that, um, in addition to having this public blog site where they leak uh, victim data, um, they also have this auction functionality where, uh, you know, they can actually sell the data to the highest bidder. Um, you know, sometimes that could be the victim, but not always. So it's, it gets pretty tricky. But again, same format. We see a myriad of company names. These guys have been active for, for several months and have been posting for several months. And so there's a lot up here. Um, you know, Maze probably has the most, you know, pushing like 250 um, companies or victims listed on their blog. Uh, but um, uh, these guys are uh, number two. And I would say, you know, three, four, five would be the rest of them that we're going to look at here. You know, your Doppelpamers, um, NIMT, uh, aka Nephilim or NIMT Revenue, um, and NetWalker as well. But in any case, you know, each of these have uh, extended entries, kind of like we saw with the Avidon page. But again, what sets these guys apart is the auction functionality. So here we have a look at just, you know, how that is structured. Again, you know, not very flashy, not very interesting, but, uh, you know, the companies are listed along with, you know, entry uh, starting prices for the bids uh, and then, um, you know, any sort of minimums and maximums uh, as well as any other helpful information. But um, a lot of this came from some particular law firms that were hit uh, with this ransomware, and uh, they were able to um, uh, separate the data out into specific clients of the law firm. Um, and so, you know, you can see some of the names on this list, they get uh, a little bit scary. 
Um, but you know, it's not just limited to that. They've shown that they'll put just about anything up here. And you also, you get kind of a tick down. So, you know, the, a lot of these still have, you know, well over a month uh, remaining. But if we look at uh, this top entry here, there's four days uh, remaining before uh, that gets um, pushed over. So that's Revil, and if we look at Doppelheimer, again, you know, we're going to look at you know, the more active and visible ones today. So again, these guys have been posting just about as long as uh, as as Revil, but um, you know, not as many victims up here, and that can mean many different things. Either they cooperated, um, or they were able to get their name taken off through some other way. But these lists are by no means um, the full list of victims by these ransomware families. These are just the ones that have chosen to um, not cooperate, uh, whatever that ends up meaning, uh, and then they get their data. Um, you know, first comes the threats uh, with the name and shame, and then comes the actual dumping of, of, of data. But again, similar format as we see with the other sites, just very, very basic stuff. Um, you know, company name, details, some examples, um, and then once they dump the full information, they would uh, add that to these entries as well. And we'll look at a couple others, then we'll get to the biggie, uh, which would be uh, uh, Maze. So here we have Clop again. You know, this one you don't hear about so much in the news, but um, again, very, very active. And these guys, as well as uh, Nephilim, have been kind of targeting very specific large data sets from victims uh, and then posting those in in pieces. And so you can kind of see that format here uh, with Holden Mayer, Indiana Bulls, uh, Prominent, et cetera, um, you know, each being posted in specific pieces. Um, and then a sort of header at the top of uh, what, uh, what the site has to offer. You know, so we can keep scrolling through these, but again, not not a whole lot interesting here. Just you know, your standard names, but they do you you do see this format where they part out the dumps um, over time, especially in these very very large data sets. Oftentimes, we're talking about several hundred gigabytes uh, or several uh, terabytes and more. So again, Ragnar, you know, these guys are somewhat in cahoots with um, uh, Maze, and, uh, and Maze also works with the Prolock actors. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, I don't want to say cooperation, uh, but there's a lot of sort of sharing of victim data, um, victim access, and victim environments. Um, but here we see Ragnar Locker, which has been getting quite a bit of press lately. These are the guys that started uh, delivering their ransomware in virtual box images. Um, and then they would map the local drives from within the VM uh, and go through the encryption routines from there, which has been able to evade some, but not all, um, you know, endpoint security measures. So moving on from those guys, let's take a look at Nephilim or NIMT Revenue. You know, it's kind of evolved uh, over time. But again, standard kind of format. You see companies that are um, currently being released. Now, currently, they don't have anything under the finished uh, category here. Everything is, you know, what you could call active. But again, you know, a lot of uh, uh, listings here. With each victim, there's at least two to three parts uh, for uh, per release. Now, uh, interesting thing about these guys is they seem to be primarily interested in oil and gas, utility, energy companies, uh, etc., which we'll see a little bit of in the uh, statistics. So let's kind of look at a couple others. We already looked at Avidon, but let's have a look at Netwalker. So these guys, you know, I guess you get the prize for you know maybe the least amount of eye candy on the site. You know, not uh, not not the most pleasing design in the world, at least in my opinion. But again. Similar to all the other ones, gets the point across, and you can see, you know, standard format victims data. Uh, these guys will, once it's posted, put a password um, for the archive, and then it's downloadable directly from here. Now let's look at the biggies, Maze. These guys have been kind of at the top of this uh, uh, activity, if you will, and you know, right on their site, um, they've got. Currently, two clear net mirrors and one dark web or Tor based mirror. Um, but the the front page of their site is always a press release of some sort. The latest from them is dated July 9th, 2020. 
Uh, but if we go further into the site, we'll see the actual archive of, of, of victims. And again, as I said, and as we'll see in the statistics, these are not all the victims. These are just the ones that they have posted publicly on. So right now there's somewhere around 250 companies listed on this site, but that is not the total amount of May's victims by any stretch of the imagination. These are just the ones, again, that chose to not cooperate, um, which could mean several different things. Either they, unfortunately, were forced to pay or, you know, made some sort of deal or are in active negotiations. You know, it could be a number of different things. So um, that's that's where these come from. But again, same format, um, you know, victims, you get some information, especially lately. These guys have with every company, they're basically publishing about five percent of the loot, um, you know, right off the bat. But, you know, you can go into any of these guys and just kind of see, you know, there's a proof of compromise. Um, and it's as simple as it gets. So, you know, again, those are some of the, the, the main families that are involved in this uh, um, sort of trend, if you will, of leaking victim data uh, to public repositories. Now, if we want to talk statistics again, um, I have been tracking that in a not so elegant uh, way, but um, it is interesting to see. Now, Avidon, as we said, just started doing these postings last Friday. And so right now there's just one company on the site. It is a construction company. So according to the data, they are currently interested in construction. But again, Avidon is a ransomware service. You know, anybody can become a partner or an affiliate. Um, there are some country-based restrictions there, but you know anyone can launch an Avidon attack. There are presumably far more victims than just this one that they've listed. But if we go through some of the others here, again, we see uh, our NIMTI revenue or Nephilim, uh, and we start to see more and more. And we can, you know, if we look at these uh, industries involved here, we can kind of start to see some, you know, at least based on these companies that they're posting, some so, some indication of which industries they're focusing on. Um, the most, or, or at least which ones seem to fall victim um, more often. So these guys, uh, we're seeing more utility, oil, gas, energy companies um, being targeted or having their data leaked um, from this particular ransom family. Um, and, but then you can see some of the other top ones, and th there's not a whole lot of, of data on the site, but you know, some of the other top ones are the engineering and construction services, as well as uh, transportation and the manufacturing of transportation equipment. Um, and then just FYI, these industry names or uh, categories actually come from, they're mapped via LinkedIn's uh, industry list. So that's where these uh, industry names come from. If we look at NetWalker, you know, again, there's a lot more uh, on that site, and so we can uh, pull in a little bit more and see a different picture of you know where where their focus is or what industries may be having more issues with this ransomware family. Um, and again, the top guys here um, are healthcare, you know, very timely, and it's uh, you know not not a great time for that industry. Um, but the ransomware guys don't care; they're still going after them. Um, healthcare, financial services. Um, information technology and services, so IT companies, uh, MSSPs, consulting firms, and the like. Um, wholesale companies and electrical, electrical and electronic manufacturing companies kind of round out the top with regard to NetWalker victims. Now let's look at a couple other biggies. And then we'll, again, we'll, we'll, we'll conclude with Maze, which is kind of the top dog with these. You know, Doppelpamer, again, we see uh, similar um, statistics here. Financial services, Companies appearing the most on their blogs, followed by transportation, consumer products, but also government administration. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we can we can see which industries are uh, experiencing the most issues based on the data on these sites. Uh, but the other kind of message here is no industry is immune. You know, they're not holding back. You know, despite uh, a lot of these families making statements uh, about not targeting healthcare during the pandemic. It still happens. We still see it. They still do it. They'll go after whatever they can uh, in order to get whatever revenue they can. That's the driver. If we look at uh, Revil, we see a lot more companies on this. Uh, but again, financial services appearing at the top, followed by information technology and services, huge targets there, retail companies, uh, consumer products, 
legal services, those are your law firms. And again, a lot of the auction data uh, that these guys are posting and, and, and trying to auction off uh, is coming from some of those law firm hits. Um, electrical manufacturing, industrial automation. Um, so again, a lot, uh, a, a very wide spread of industries hit by these guys. But let's have a look at the top dog maze and see where um, where the focus is with regards to those victims statistically. And it appears again as though financial services and information technology and services are at the top of the list, followed by uh, consumer products. Uh, and then you've got some of the other uh, more common ones, your food and agriculture, uh, electrical equipment, manufacturing, construction, um, automotive, maritime, real estate. Again, no one's immune. They're going after everybody. Um, and the companies that we see listed on these sites is, is absolute uh, proof of that. So, you know, as we said in a bunch of blogs and such lately, um, you know, it's not enough anymore to just be able to recover from a ransomware incident. Um, we're in a time now where you have to basically assume that any ransomware compromise or a ransomware attack is also a full scale data breach. And so not only are you dealing with the um, logistical and economic repercussions of that attack, but the, the same uh, applies to uh, the repercussions and impact uh, of, of, of a data breach within uh, targeted environments. You have to worry then about all the, the, the rules and regulations around public disclosure of the breach. Um, and we're seeing a lot more of that crop up as these attacks continue. So it's no longer enough to just be able to recover and restore your data to a known clean state and make sure that you do whatever you need to do to um, make to, to not allow that same attacker in again. Prevention is absolutely critical. The only surefire way to make sure you don't end up on one of these lists is to not, <laughs> it's, it sounds like an oversimplification, but the, the only way is to not uh, be attacked um, or have your defenses as such that they can prevent the attack. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a good time, as if we don't already know this, to really step back and take a look at what we're doing with regards to endpoint security and how we're protecting our resources um, and how effective those protective measures actually are. Because, you know, we're seeing more and more proof that some of the uh, older guard or legacy type solutions really are not helping against these attacks. Um, if you're you know waiting for signatures to update to, for the latest um, you know uh, for the latest variant of, of of Maze or Netwalker, you know good luck. You're probably going to end up on one of these lists. You need to have something that has the ability to uh, completely prevent these attacks from occurring, regardless of which point in the uh, which stage of the attack we're talking about. Um, but ideally, the, you know, if, if, you can, if you can block the stuff coming in, you know, either be it via email, you know, phishing emails or, or exploiting external facing applications, you know, uh, uh, vulnerable RDP services, etc. All that stuff needs to be focused, but you also have to focus on, you know, if they do get in, what am I doing on my endpoints to prevent this stuff? And, you know, obviously, you know, Sentinel-1, we pride ourselves on being able to do exactly that and prevent these types of infections. Um, all of these families that I've discussed today uh, can fully be prevented, detected, and if need be, remediated against with Sentinel-1 endpoint protection. But, um, you know, every environment is different. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's a very good time to review um, whatever controls you have in place and make sure that they are robust enough, not just to uh, restore and return functionality to a normal pre-infection state, but also to prevent. So with that, I think we'll kind of conclude today. And again, I just wanted to walk through some of these um, uh, leaking sites that, that are being put up by the ransomware, uh, by the actors behind these ransomware families. You know, if, if you haven't seen them, it's kind of interesting just to see it. But we can also dive into the statistics and kind of see, you know, within each of these families, you know, what industries are being impacted the most by these types of attacks. 
So hopefully this was a little bit enlightening and uh, interesting, and uh, we appreciate you joining and watching, and we will talk to you next time.